No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm in here with the YNW squad. I got YNW B Slime uh, on my uh, left. Uh, Again, uh, uh, uh. haven't seen him in like four years. He got absolutely gigantic. Ah, ah, ah. And then, of course, we have his beautiful mother, my Jamie, mama. in the building as well. What's up? What's up? How you guys doing? You know what I'm saying? We chilling. You know what I'm saying? If I were you, I would be freaked out by the fact that the Durkios are there again. Man, you want me to tell the truth? Yes. It was bad. It wasn't good at all. But the fact that somehow that has found its way back onto the set and that it hasn't been on camera since that day that you were there, that's kind of trippy. Hey, man, it's just meant to be. But like, meant to be slime. The Durkio comment was classic. Durkios. <laughs> What's your memory Durkio. of that interview? Um, Bro, to be honest, it's like I fell asleep and woke up and I was here. But like... A key memory from that interview, probably when I shouted out my clan. Your Fortnite clan. Yep. Yeah, you taught me a lot about Fortnite during that interview. I don't know why. Yeah, you let me in on all the kids' secrets. It's kind of f***ed up. Shh, bro. I just was saying earlier, though, that you, you taught me the word goaded. Bro. I didn't know about that before You know what's that. crazy? Nobody uses that word anymore. Damn. And I'm so sad. Okay, I'm like, going to stop then, for sure. That was like, goaded, like 2019 was a time, man. Fortnite was, psh, you know what I'm saying? We used to use the word goaded, cracked, one shot. Nobody does that anymore. Yeah, the whole, the big thing on that interview was that you gave Tifu props and you dissed Ninja. That was kind of spicy at the time. Hard to even remember why that was like a thing. Man. I miss that time. <laughs> Tifu, Ninja, man, Tifu's still better. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no matter what. You actually watch him, though? He, I not don't know anymore. who's number one anymore. Nope, none of them are number one You don't one watch anymore. Fortnite in general? Fortnite died, like, in 2021. Fortnite's not a thing anymore. Well, I mean, it, it's still a thing. It's just not nearly as popular. Man, I knew Fortnite was, like, falling off right after they, like, lowered their prices. Like, it's, like, $80 for, like... 1100 V-Bucks now. Really? And I checked that. I'm like, oh, yeah, y'all y'all boys struggling for real. I need to get it together. Feature price going down. V-Bucks price going down. It was terrible. Damn. Like I was like. You never got into Fortnite, though, right? Nope. I just got the charges. <laughs> <laughs> I've spoken to a lot of young parents who have had to figure out what the fuck like, V-Bucks were. what is this? What did you buy? And it was always, well, let, me get, let me get your car. I said, see. Don't ever give him your card number. Right. Because he will use it. Yeah. I got my own card now, though. Uh, and you reckon ball man? Is that what this says? No, you use a K-Subi. What's the shirt say? Oh, is it Lanvin? Oh, okay, I couldn't see all the, the other vowels and consonants. My bad. Your mama tell him to wear it. How you really say it? Levon. You don't yeah. say the you don't say the first N. It's just Levon. You guys are so easily impressed by these designers aren't you <laughs> like oh the the n is silent nah, it's nah, so nah, nah, cool nah. to be honest though like he just to be liked honest the shoes. he didn't like the to shirt. be honest i don't really like you know designer kind of got forced on me like i don't really like rocking designer you didn't choose the drip the drip chose you no my mama actually chose it. your mom chose the drip for you <laughs> yeah she buys all the designer i'd be telling her yo you can go you know like you know how the rapper image is supposed to be like rah, rah. You know, I gotta watch this. no i don't really like I buy you it's regular clothes. Sometimes, but it's like, I don't really like, I don't know, like, I don't really like, how do I say this? How do I say this? It's like, I don't really care for designer. Like, I'd rather go out. I would rather come to this interview in a polo shirt and some polo sweats and some slides. Okay, but if you dress like the way that I'm dressed right now, where this is just literally a shirt that somebody gave me at some store one time. Shout out to them. I don't remember. And then plain black jeans and then some like $80 sandals. If you're a rapper and you were trying to pull this fit off day after day after day of just rocking like a free shirt and some plain ass jeans, that sounds like a, I, I've never seen a rapper really like, be able to do that consistently. Somebody, somebody told me this, right? Somebody told me this. And they said, as an artist, they either rock with your aesthetic or they rock with your music, right? Mm. When they rock with both, then like you just shoot to the top. But I felt like I kind of like gravitated towards trying to get people to rock with my music more than my aesthetic, which is kind of an issue when I think about it now. But I didn't really care. No, I, like I, I think it's it's smart in the long run, but I also just wonder to what extent 
You know, because like you could be a guy who goes to work in the office every day and just wear a plain ass shirt, plain ass pants. Nobody will ever fucking think about it. But as a rapper, it's like you almost need to make yourself stand out in a way. That's why we, went, we lived through the the face tattoo era. Yeah. Where everyone needed face tattoos or else you weren't even a rapper. Facts. I remember that. I remember watching all your interviews in like 2017, 2018. Everybody who came on had the craziest face tats. Yeah. And kids were getting signed off face tats for sure. Yeah. The SoundCloud era. I miss the, it. The clout rap era. You miss that? No. <laughs> music was like, there was only like a couple good artists that broke from that era, but it was like music was like, I was looking at it, I'm like, yo, oh no, what is this? Like, bro, you know it's crazy? Like, But that's the era that raised you, my friend. Eh. Right? I mean, yeah, because yeah. I didn't really listen to like all like the old school rappers. I really just grew up listening to like my brother and ex. So like listening to them artists kind of. Mm. Push me into the artist that I am But it's also like When you interviewed my brother And he had those face tats We told him not to get them face tats Really? Mm-hmm. We told him don't get them face tats Especially this one She said no, don't get them face tats But in like 20 he has a nice face Right, but in 2017 <laughs> When Melly was like first coming up or whatever I mean, number one, like in the streets or whatever Like face tattoos are super popular And then in the rap shit same shit. It's like yeah. everybody at that time, every rapper that Melly was looking at, from Lil Pump to Smoke Perp to whoever, like not not to say he was looking up to them, but every rapper he was looking at, period, they're all having face tattoos. I'm sure yeah. it seemed like Crazy a pretty easy tattoos. decision. Yeah, he did that. It was whatever. It's it's like a cool way of making yourself look permanently ugly. I don't think <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna ever get face tats. But I'm gonna get like a tattoo. <laughs> just staring at his hand. What are you gonna get on your hand next to so the basically, Puka shell necklace or bracelet? It's like, I don't know. The idea that I had was like I was gonna get the world and put Y and W in it, and mm. then put like roots going down like my arm, and put like my family names like that I've always rocked with. That's what's up. Yeah. So okay, this, this is my question: is Let's just fast forward to the future. I saw you guys holding san- holding signs outside of the jail on Christmas and stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you. I've seen a lot of people catch nasty cases throughout my time doing this, and I've seen very, very few families show the kind of support that you guys do. Man, at the end of the day, bro, that's you know what I'm saying. It's, I don't know how to explain it. Like that's just family, bro. Like no matter what, no matter what, everybody who don't switch up, turn their back, lost faith. We family, like we never going never. Cause at the end of the day, this is you know we built this all together, mm. and if one person get locked up, we gonna support them until they come out. Right. And when they come out, we still gonna continue to support them. But something like the Christmas thing, whose idea was that? Uh, it was like it was kind of like a group decision. Okay. But mom, it was my mom's birthday, and she said I want to see my son. So we said he doesn't have his cell phone privileges. He doesn't have his securest calls. Only way we can see him is going to the jail. So. We wrote on signs, Merry Christmas. And I found this window. You yeah. were able to tell. We almost got in trouble, actually, for um <laughs> finding the window because it was some, like, black police officer. He was like, uh, but one, the first guy was cool, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't tripping. He wasn't tripping, but then the other guy came. So black police officer, he's like, no, you guys got to leave. This restricted area, this trespassing. But the other guy was like, yeah, like, you can see him. I know what you guys are here for. Just stand on the sidewalk and do it because we got to come through here. Mm. And the other guy made them boys wait. Until we left, and I was like, "Yeah, y'all weird. I don't know what police be on. Be tripping." But I saw a clip online that said like YNW Melly like banging on the the bars to itself, like filmed from like a million miles away. That's that's not real, right? Or is it? Oh, if the one know, like a couple yeah, of years hey, ago. Hey, it was you, a while ago. If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Because no. I guess you could know which cell it was. If you know, you know. But you can't see shit in the clip, so I was just gonna. If you know, you know. You know. If you were there, you were there. If you weren't there, you never know. Right. But what? Okay. What? What? What makes you still feel like it's on you to go so hard for your son, even in a situation where so many people, it seems like, kind of do the least. I feel like you guys are doing the most. And at the end That's of the day, son. bro, I look at it like this, right? All these other people who were around when Melly was coming up, you know what I'm saying? They're family, but they're not family. End of the day, that's blood. Like, that's my firstborn. We came I'm from always, the same. Room. I'm gonna always ride for him. I'm gonna always be right by his side, like letting him know that I'm here. I love you, whether you can hear my voice or not, because he still don't got phone privileges. Mm. But him knowing, like, 
I'm not just out here living my best life. Like I'm hurting every day that he's locked up in there. Like I think about him every day. Mm. Yeah, like it's so common for people to just move on so quickly. And it's like you two are the two people who just really can't move on. You have to you have to hold them down. You have to be the one still trying to make noise about it. But is that ain't a no, conscious ain't thing? Ain't no moving on because he's about to come home soon. But it's just like on some like a lot of this nigga done been locked up for like almost four years coming up. So it's mm. like, you know, a lot of people lose faith after that. But I mean, it's insane. Exactly. Four years is crazy. And to have like the police basically like doing PR on behalf of the prosecution, you exactly. know, and like yeah. constantly kind of putting that narrative out there. Yeah. And meanwhile, you guys are pretty reserved in terms of like what you can say about it, right? Yeah, it's like the PR, you know, the PR for the police, they basically try to paint that he's guilty without saying that he's guilty. But like, if you really like, you know, I never, I always keep my tongue shut about it because, you know what I'm saying, I'm an artist myself too. I can't really say too much. But it's like, bro, to all like the fans and stuff who look at this situation and be like, oh, he's guilty. He wrote a song about it. If y'all just like go read the black and whites, it tells the story itself. The song was like three years before the situation, oh, right? The song was four years. <laughs> I mean, for, for starters, that song was written like before I even met him. So exactly. before he had like basically any level of popularity. At all. But it's also like they try to say, oh, he got 66 pages of DNA. I'm like, do y'all niggas really like read what's going on? Because if y'all like, if y'all just look at the, you know what I'm saying? If y'all just look at the caption, y'all gonna be like, oh, that's crazy. But. You just got to really read what's going on. Bro. But isn't it weird how people seem so eager to throw your brother into the, the guilty bucket? Because the Whereas, world... But those same people were willing to give Tory Lanez infinite benefit of the doubt. You know, like they, they were willing to totally entertain all kinds of conspiracy theories and stuff. And I'm not asking you guys to like so, agree with the Tory Lanez feel... thing or whatever. But in terms of Melly, it's like, why is everybody so on board with it i guess it's because there's not really like a counter narrative that we've really seen yet that presumably we're going to see when it goes to okay, trial okay. And that's basically how his team works it's you guys see when we go to trial mm. it's and basically then, like the reason why people are so quick or are so quick to put melly in that guilty bucket because it's like okay look 2019 when he first got locked up a lot of people was like oh yeah he's not guilty free melly free melly but then the more that we kept our mouth shut the more that we didn't say nothing and the more that like, the blogs and stuff kept pushing out that motive, like, oh, they just found this, and they got that, and they got this, and they got that. Mm. It just makes it look like, I don't know, man. But. Because the Tory Lane shit was kind of the opposite, where his defense was putting shit out into the media yeah. all throughout the months and years that led up to the case. And then once it actually went to trial, the jury wasn't convinced, and it turned out that whatever the court of public opinion was saying didn't really matter. Whereas this situation kind of feels like the opposite, where it's like we're probably going to find out a ton of different shit when it goes to trial. And meanwhile, we've had four years of, like, nothing. Yeah. And all I got to say is, bro, if you know, you know, like, you just got to read. Y'all niggas went to school. Just read, bro. Like, if you really want to know what's up, just read the black and whites. You know, you'll see everything. Mm. Nobody lies on black and whites, bro. Right. So the statement that came out on Melly's Instagram a couple of weeks ago or a month ago or whatever, like a long ass statement basically about the treatment that he's been enduring within the jail and, and having his phone privileges taken away, not being able to speak to you guys, not being able to speak to his lawyers, et cetera, basically just making it out to be like, you know, obviously jail's not supposed to be a great experience, but making it out to be like truly inhumane. Uh, how did that statement come about? Like, and I'm not sure if you guys, how much you can say, but like w what made things rise to the occasion where that statement felt like it had to be issued? It was just months of going on. Like, we had a hearing, and the judge basically said, like, he can't do anything when it comes down to the jail. The jail has their own rules. They make their own rules. So even though, like, you know, he has, they're violating his constitutional rights, like, to be able to have phone calls and have any kind of contact with the public, with his with his family, like, outside of jail. Like, we don't know if he's eating, if he's not, if he's good or what. Like, we just don't know nothing and it's like he's in the county like he's not in no prison a lot of people keep saying that it's so annoying he's not in prison he's at the Broward County Jail he hasn't went to trial yet he's so he's just we're just sitting what's the main thing that we're waiting on for him to go to trial um so basically 
the death penalty had you know right. they're still debating we're still that, trading that. Oh that's, God, that's, that's the crazy. whole reason like we're still debating on like they're well they're still debating like the supreme court and everything they're still debating on if he should get the death so, penalty or not so that's what we're really or if on. that should be included it in should be the included trial. when we go to trial so we're basically trying not to go to trial with the death penalty on so it's just we're just in waiting and then now the holidays have come and so nothing's open and it's just more time and more time wow and I mean, you, so you, when would you say you think seems likely that the trial could start or that this whole death penalty thing could be resolved? Probably, I'm, I'm thinking February or March. Really? It's supposed to be relatively soon? Yeah, it's supposed to be the first of the year. Wow. So within the first three to four months of the year. Right. And so, but him putting that statement out, I mean, how did that message get to whoever is operating his Instagram? I don't know. Because he doesn't have access to the phone, right? It's like, was he able to write a letter? or if He, he knew, writes he letters. Knows. So he Is probably, it? most likely he like wrote a letter. Because I don't run his Instagram. Really? <laughs> no. Okay. Is it the label or management or something? Yeah, he has like management and the label and stuff like that. But yeah. Damn. That's terrible. Um, But but he still still doesn't have phone privileges. No. Nothing's changed since that statement still went public. Still hasn't, I still haven't spoke to my son. Damn. How long has it been? Like, it's been a few months. I actually got to talk to him for like probably three minutes on Thanksgiving. Really? So. And he was just randomly able to get access to the phone? Yeah, and he like called. What's that? You know, a little Fortnite dance over here? Nah. <laughs> huh? What was that? Like, we chilling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it really did seem like some kind of Fortnite dance. I don't know specifically. Maybe like a TikTok thing. Like y'all saying? <laughs> this one is the one. We're trying to force him to do TikTok. I mean, he needs to get more involved with TikTok with his new project dropping. <sighs> so mm, TikTok. Bro. You not feeling thing. it? Nah, bro. TikTok is like, bro. Bro, I posted my brother message that he like everybody wanted us to post. I posted it, bro. They took it down. TikTok took it down. I had to appeal it to get it put back up. And I'm just looking like, bro, y'all got people posting, like, gore and, like, porn on here. Ass. No, nah, like, literally, like, no, like, real, like, porn. You got to send me a link to that because I haven't seen a lot. Of, you're not supposed to be able to post real porn. On, on December, on December 22nd of 2022, bro, if you were on TikTok that day, bro, that just showed you how much, like, TikTok does not care about their platform, bro. There was gore. Like, bro, there was a, bro, I was on TikTok, bro. There was a woman holding, like, like, photographed holding a, like, a child's dead head, like, a decapitated head of a child. And then there was a man, his face was blurred. He had an axe. He swiped to the next slide. The axe is bloody, and he's holding a child's head. And there was just a lot of, like, old gore, like, that surfaced over the years. And I was like, yo, I'm seeing all this. Because I'm, like, scrolling. I'm like, yo, I just deleted the app. And then... TikTok finally got it under control, but that really comes because they don't have a lot of control over their slideshow. It's crazy. The uh, stuff that they, uh, like, I had a girl in here yesterday who had a million followers and she lost her account because she called another girl a whale. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Just whale? Whale? I mean, there's a lot more to a whale than just being fat, right? Yeah. No, nah, just, you're fat. She could have had a spout. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't realistically, know. it was probably a fat thing, but I'm still like, is this how you could lose your account with a million followers for calling a person a whale one time? Man, that's, that's why I was that talking. Is. I was talking to somebody in the back, like while my friend was on live. I was talking to somebody in the back, and I said, "Nigga, bro, his on TikTok." Yes. Yeah, I heard. I heard and that doesn't go over well. His live got terminated. And his account got banned, and I was like, "I'm black." What's the issue? Your friend lost his whole account for you saying that? In, In the, the background. background. Oh I'm talking to somebody. God. I'm like, y'all got people posting gore on here, bro. That's insane. I don't do TikTok too much. You don't? You stay off social media in general? No, I'm on social media. Okay. Just Instagram, though? Mostly Instagram. Keep it traditional? Yeah, you know. What happened to your hand? Oh, so, You getting yeah. a little scrap or something? <laughs> no. Actually, a police officer did it. How? Broward, when? A police officer. <laughs> Um, October, I'm in hand therapy for it. Yeah. But where, what was the encounter with the police over? Yeah, they were trying to, you know. Was this at the jail? Nah, this was, nah, it was nah, like so, some other stuff. Mm. 
she not going to say it, but, you know, this is more like an if-you-know-you-know know situation. But basically, Broward police had a warrant out for her phone. They tried to do an illegal search. They grabbed her hand, twisted it, tore some ligaments in her hand, and then they did an illegal search, and they did. They did it's the all going to come out because we're going to court, we're going to court for it. This was at your house? No, this is nah, while was she at, was being— at the courthouse. She was being um, questioned or something like that for another— Another case that kind of branched off from my brother's situation, right? And then, bro, it's just if you know, you know, like it's, it's all it's, it's all bullcrap. But but is this the situation where they're accusing him of having put a hit out on you? Mm-mm. No, th- no. Nope. There's a whole separate case. This, this is a, a whole, witness. This, this is a witness tampering. Like, oh, there's another case. Re- yeah, re- they they came after me. I had I don't know why. I'm like I am a mom and work full time as a nurse. Like I have nothing to do with nothing but but this is this is what they're doing four years later now they're attacking the mom what the fuck like i was blown i'm like but how much tampering did they think that you could have done or were they saying that you spoke to somebody on the outside or something like that something like that but then it turned out like it was all lies and not proven and everything but you already assaulted me for no reason because you wanted to (sighs) take my phone like that was crazy so wow yeah. Do you feel like the 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 local police and everything just have like a real vendetta against you and your family just because of his success and everything? Yeah. I feel like it's it's so public and they've done so many things in this case. It's like kind of wrong. And when I, just... I first met Melly and I was talking to him about the cops in that area, he made it perfectly clear. He said they are out to get me. Yeah. You know, like just from day one, he made that perfectly clear. And I remember being like, you gotta get the fuck out of there. Yeah. And I wish he had done that a little earlier. When he comes home, we are definitely probably not living in Florida. Right. Like, I love Florida, but we got to find somewhere else that's warm. (laughs) (laughs) I just, I can't, I don't want to live up north. Like, because what they're going through up there with the snow and the. Oh, hell no. Yeah. No, I'm not cut out. And the police in Broward always been like that, though. Yeah. They very, they're very racist. Like, black and white cops, it don't matter. Like, they're just very racist very racist no matter what right so do you just you're just staying out the way or like what has your life been like since the interview because it felt like for a little while did you take a back seat with the music and sort of chill out for All a period right, so basically after that <laughs> after that interview is crazy i did the genius interview i did that interview i was moving around with vaughn i was doing my own thing i dropped my project and then 2020 rolls around quarantine happens i can't do no shows i was doing interviews from home Went out with Vaughn. This is like October 28th. I'm out with Vaughn. We out in L.A. We chatting, you know what I'm saying? Boom. November. Bro, the man was supposed to be at my house. I think we left Friday. What was it? November 4th? We yeah, left November like 4th. He was supposed to come like to Sunday dinner. We we're supposed to play basketball. He was supposed to come to Sunday dinner. And then, you know, I love you, gang. See you later. Boom, boom. We have on a flight. Come back. November 5th, he gets shot. November 6th, the Sunday, he dies. And like I feel like that, you know, I was so young that I didn't really get to process it right. Mm. And everybody was just putting so much pressure on me to make music that I just backed away. Like, you know, I had a lot going on as a kid, so I just I just backed away for a little bit. And then, like, 2021, I wanted to come back and, like, make music for me. Because like, when I stepped back, bro, I stepped back for a while, bro. Like, bro, like... You can ask anybody around me, bro, from 2020, November, through all that time, to until I dropped City Trends, there was no music. Right. Nothing. Like, I was just sitting in my room, playing video games, and just chilling, trying to, like, get over everything. You met Vaughn through track? Bro, we don't know Vaughn since, like, Melly Day when he turned 20. Like, bro, we've known Vaughn. Like, Vaughn is family. Like, Wait, Vaughn knew Melly back then? Yeah, yeah. Bro, he, came, like, he started. He used to come to Melly Day. He used to come to Melly Day. He used to come to Melly Day. He used to come to Christmas dinner, every Sunday dinner, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Like, bro, me and this man used to sit on the phone for like hours a day, just talking about his case and like everything, for no reason. I'm like a 12 year old kid at this time. He's just talking to me. Right. Like, that was my real life brother. Like, it was deeper than music. Like, how people try to make a scene because me and him don't got a lot of pictures and all that, bro. I mean, that was my real brother. Like, I considered him a brother. Damn. And I mean, just you being so young and, you know, 
you're 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 living your whole life and you're just a normal fucking kid and you don't know any celebrities or have any kind of like you know big time shit going on and then all of a sudden your brother hits it big and that must have seemed amazing and you know your career gets off the ground and everything and then he gets locked up and then meanwhile like okay you're you're also spending time with Vaughn and then he gets killed I mean this is like serious traumatic shit that like a lot of the the strongest male role models that you had in your life are just experiencing terrible fates Mm. it was like it was like I didn't really like see it until I got older People are like, oh, you need to go to therapy, bro. I'm like, I don't even know therapy. Like, I'm chilling. Like, at the end of the day, I feel like you get through anything and everything with your ways of grieving. And I feel like therapy is just not what I need. Nah, you got to go to therapy, motherfucker. And I just started, I just started I locking you gotta go to therapy. Going to therapy. Because let me tell you something. There's nobody that you can talk to in your life the way that you're going to be able to talk to a good therapist. Because when you talk about your feelings to your mom... You have to clean up the shit that you tell her, right? Because you can't just be 100% honest with her. One of your friends, you can't be 100% honest with them because they know you. And, like, you don't necessarily want to be as vulnerable as possible. Therapy is, like, especially having dealt with all the shit that you've been through. Like, when you're sitting there on therapy for an hour, and they, they do it over Zoom calls and shit these days, so it's super fucking convenient. But just having somebody where you can just dump out all your emotions without having to feel any kind of, like, shame or fear is very valuable. Mm. That's my honest opinion, but... Agreeable and disagreeable. You know me. <laughs> I just be chilling, bro. I just like music. Like, I don't know. My life revolves around music. Yeah. I don't really like the business part or the industry or anything like that, but I just really like music. I'm just saying your music will get better the more you understand the, what's going on inside your mind. And you got a lot of shit going on inside your mind. I guarantee it because I know you're not an idiot. And because the shit that you've been through is fucked up shit that most people, 99% of people do not go through the stuff that you've already been through in your life. That's real. There's a lot of exploring to do. That's Just my advice. I think it's great advice. <laughs> I mm. told him he's going to therapy. <laughs> well, have you uh, pursued that at all? What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Being a little older, it's probably more normalized for you, right? Yeah. And I mean, I work in the medical field, so mm. I'm very open to therapy. So. Right. Definitely. Has it been hard to keep going work-wise, just given the extent to which so much of the stuff's probably weighing on you she see dead bodies <laughs> that's a good point a lot a <laughs> lot i work in the icu damn so yeah but i mean it actually me going to work is like as weird it may sound it's my peace mm. because when i'm home i'm constantly thinking about like my son what's going on with him what's going on with the case if he if Brandon's okay. What's going on with his music? What What's the next move? You know, so it's like I'm always, always busy. And then, like, I started managing artists, too. So it's like I be at work. I'm just normal. Don't nobody know, like, really my outside life, outside of work. They just know I'm a nurse. Mm. That must be good. I, I separate the two. Definitely. For sure. Um, okay. So in terms of, like, where you feel like you're at with your music and career now, like, how would you describe it? Feels right like you're doing now, a lot bro. of love songs. How's that heart doing? <laughs> bro, right now, bro, I just feel like I'm in that state where I feel like I'm finding myself again, like, with music and what sound I want to create because, you know, like, Melly's coming home real soon this time, like, actually. And, like, from there, there is no time to do anything because, you know, like, you know, like, I don't got time to do nothing. So right now I'm just, like, building my project and building everything for me. So... When, it, when he comes home, it's not like I'm just Melly's little brother anymore. I don't have my own name. So I feel like right now, I'm just like, I'm just doing me, just building me. And yeah, you're going to see, you're going to see in the next, like, I'll say five to six months how everything plays out. Really? Okay. Yeah. Who, who, who are you working with musically, or are you just working alone at this point? Um, I would say, bro, they're not really like big people. I'm not working with no big artists. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just working with myself and like my friends, like Snow, Snow Banks. Israel, Izzy, um, with producers, bro. I don't really know. Like, I really just be with Evergreen, and, like people like that. I said they're my real dogs. I just be chilling with my people, cause right now I'm not really focused on like no big, big features. Like I'm just trying to rebuild, like rebrand and rebuild myself to get everything that I want the way I want it to be done. Why do you have to rebrand? Because when you came out, you were so fucking young that it's like you're when still that out, young in a lot of people's minds. Yes, exactly. Like, when I came out, bro, I was literally, like, 11, bro. Yeah. And like, I stepped back. I stepped back. Then I came back out, and I'm, like, 15 now. 
So it's like, I don't necessarily want to get rid of that baby goat because I'll forever be the baby goat. I don't care. Like, I love being the baby goat. But it's like, you know, people got to grow up, bro. Because if I keep that baby goat image forever, kids grow up. I'm trying to expand to, like, people your age. Right. You're old, so. Old as shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, I mean, that that's, like, a weird thing to think about. Because some people, like, some people, people just love them when they're, like, 12. And then all of a sudden they're 16. And people just kind of, like, lose interest. So it's, like, and it's, like, it's like that with, like, artists sometimes it's like that with like models and shit you're, you'll see like an actor or an actress that like they're just like a really good looking 10 year old and they have this like great mute hey, yo okay not like that no. <laughs> people like the way they look when they're young and then they get a little bit older and everybody just loses interest somehow yeah yeah i don't know it happens like bro I can and then name, his voice changed i can name a handful of artists that that happened to but like for me bro it's just like i just didn't like bro i lost complete my brother had to talk to me. That's how bad it got. Cause I lost complete interest in music. Like after all, like after Vaughn died, after so many people were dying around me, to my brother in jail, I don't got him for to give me no motivation, bro. He gets timed phone calls. He can't talk to me the way he want to talk to me. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So you got, I got nobody at this point. You know what I'm saying? Except my mom. I got nobody right. to tell me to keep going. Why would I keep going? But were you, uh, like, how much music did you actually make with Melly? Or Bro, did you start making music the after The only he... song that I made with this man when he was out of jail was One Step. Right. That was the only song we ever made. And we were messing around. You know what I'm saying? Just because you were at the very beginning of making music? No. Has most of your music making was, time been bro, apart from him? I was 10. I was 10 making that song, bro. Right. And we were just messing around, bro. We were just doing us. That's when music was like fun. Mm. We were just chilling. And then he went to jail. Then they gave me the Dying For You song. And I didn't even want to do it for real because it's like, feel fake i was like i'm gonna do it anyways what they gave you a a verse that he had already recorded yeah they gave me a hook a hook and a verse that he had already recorded i'm like bro this is not how this is supposed to be done Mm. but i'm already knowing that we're gonna we're gonna do it again like bro me and my brother bro we got a real plan like when he come home like we got a real plan like you're gonna see in the next five (laughs) to six months if everything plays out the way it's supposed to play out in court and the way it's supposed to play out in the industry bro we're gonna be unstoppable how would you say you feel with the trial coming up, are you just like nervous or to be are you honest, bro, excited, bro? Like my brother's, it's 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 like it's like it's like bro, it's hard to explain. It's winnable, bro. Like his case, bro, is really really winnable. It's all circumstantial evidence, but like, bro, like his like, I'm gonna say it, bro. His defense team is like ah, it's like I don't know how to explain it, like. Bro, like people just gotta do their job. That's all I gotta say, bro. So you're you're confident in his defense? I am. Yeah. I would assume but it's still, yeah. that he spent a lot of fucking money on lawyers. <laughs> like an amount that would probably That kid spent a lot of money on a lot of things that shouldn't have been spent on. Really? Like what else? And cars, jewelry. Mm. And he's not even out to wear the jewelry. I'm like why are you buying jewelry and you're not here to wear the jewelry? No, definitely lawyers are probably the best thing you can spend That's money what on. I, bro. But yeah. he's good with lawyers, bro. Like, money ain't an issue for lawyers. Like, he's fine. But it's just like, it was a lot of stuff that should have went to lawyers that he didn't spend on lawyers. And I'm like, bro. And now it's like, he don't even want to chain no more. I'm like, bro, what? The, why'd you buy it then? Really? Yeah, I'm like, bro. Well, a chain, a chain that's the... like four or five years old from from a rapper's perspective, yeah. yeah he's like, ah, oh, that chain old. It's an I don't old want chain. It. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you spent 150 thousand on this chain. Wear the chain. Nah, I'm not gonna wear it when I get. It. I'm gonna get a bigger one. I'm like, but if he had been free this all the time, there's no way in hell he would be wearing that chain, right? Because it's uh, like he would have upgraded his jewelry five times. You remember that? You remember that chain I wore at Rolling Loud? That one that with the big world and it was spinning. That's the one we're talking about. Yes. Yeah, okay. bro, he don't want that chain no more. I'm like, bro, that chain is huge. Like, bro. It was... This big on my chest. You don't want it no more. But that's some real rich rapper shit is that whenever, you know, rappers will always like get their chain snatched and get it back and then be like, I don't want that chain anymore. Because it's like that that was just a moment in their life. So now I got to move on. With Melly, yeah. I could understand him being like, no, nah, that was from before my case. All my jewelry is going to be new because that shit reminds me of my of what yeah. happened with the case and everything. I, I already know, bro. And that's just how his mind thinks. He's a very creative person. Very creative person. Yeah, definitely. Who turned their back on him? You said the people kind of <laughs> turned their back. If you know, you know. That's my favorite word to say. If you know, you know. Right. But what what do you feel like certain people were supposed to have been doing 
for him. That, that, that I wouldn't say so much as people turn this back on. It's just like I noticed more that whenever someone posts Melly or he's trending in the media, it used to be like free Melly, free Melly, free Melly, like more positive comments. Like, and I try not to read the comments because they will really ruin your day. Yeah. They will ruin your fucking day. And they, my bad for cursing. No, it's fine. But yeah, like, so now I notice a lot of the comments are more negative, more like, oh, he did this and oh, he made a song about it and this and that. So like that jump be. But I just look at them people like, they're all consumers. Everybody who thinks like that is 10 times out of 10 a consumer. Right. You know what a consumer is, right? Well, pretty much everybody's a consumer. Not everybody. Of content, of music, of media, you know. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, I mean, they are they don't have any skin in the game. You yeah. know, if he gets locked up, all Melly is to them is somebody who maybe was going to write more songs that they would like. So to them, it's like very easy to be like, fuck this guy. And and it's just easier for people to sort of like cast judgment on somebody rather than to sort of be invested in their cause, right? That's the world, bro. Yeah. That's just the world for you. That's always how I've seen it. It's like, that's, that's the world, bro. Because at the end of the day, these people glorify us and they glorify Melly and they glorify these rappers. Then these rappers get put in a situation they glorify them for the first year, and if they don't make it out that situation in the first year, they de-glorify them, and mm. they put that glory on somebody else. You know, it seems it's like it's not exactly the same, but it feels like it's kind of like that with the Thug thing too, where Thug is like everybody's favorite rapper. Yeah, bro, and look, he gets right locked now, up, and I mean, everybody's screaming "Free Thug" right now. But are they? It feels like that. That's kind of dissipated. Yeah, I feel like, bro, like it goes like this, bro. Everybody scream "Free Thug." Everybody scream "Free Thug." One negative thing comes out about his case, our Thug's gone. He's not getting out. What, bro? Let the case play out. But like, to be thug. fair, there's like ten people who've taken plea deals. It doesn't yeah. doesn't look great. Bro, thug straight, bro. He Free don't beat thug, that kid. Free bro. thug for Free sure. Thug. <laughs> thug. It just as time goes by, it just becomes kind of harder and harder for people to imagine that there's a happy ending to this Man, for him. I just look at it like you got a great lawyer, bro. You straight. You got great lawyers. You're good. Right. You could beat anything with good lawyers. Right. Well, uh, so you're on good terms with the other B slime from YSL. Oh, bro, I never <laughs> had a conversation with him. Oh, okay. At first, I was looking at like, who, and I'm like, oh, B slime, bro. I never like had a great conversation. Like, I don't really know him, but bro, I never really care. Like, we cool, bro. Right. We YSL. We should do a B slime and B slime. That'll be hard. I'll That'll definitely be do hard. That. They need that. I think there was a period of time where I thought that you were YSL. And then I realized they were talking about somebody else. Bro, I remember um I remember when um they released the um the album, like the album, like the the what's the what's the word for the album? Compilation or what was it? What's the word for Which the album? So like how fun? like like how X had members only and then how his collective? Yeah, like a collective album. A right. collective album. And they put how my brother was on um the B Slime song, like the really B Slime song. Bro. I got tagged at the bottom. They didn't even tag him, bro. They tagged me. <laughs> they tagged me, and I'm. And every time I did an interview, they was like, "What is it like working with Thug?" And I'm like, "Bro, that's not me on the song." <laughs> I was like, "Yo." Everybody was like, right? Everybody was like, "Bro, you got a Thug feature on the Thug song in my Discord and everything." Like, bro, what is y'all? What is y'all niggas talking about? Wow. And the whole time, man. I don't know. <laughs> that's hilarious. But uh, you ever been around them? Who Thug? The slimes. I've only been around him mm, once, mm. and I was like at his studio when I was like twelve. And oh. Like, bro, that dude talks a lot. Like, it gets to a point where, like, if he starts talking, bro, he gonna talk your ear off. Thug. Yes. Mm. Just sitting there. I'm just sitting there listening. That's a viewpoint I'm trying to hear, though. I hate small talk, and I hate people who just ramble to me. But I'll pretty much just let Young Thug talk about whatever. Yeah, bro. He's just like talking, like. But that was my impression of him when I interviewed him was basically like, holy shit, this, like, because he said multiple things that were, like, clearly mega viral during my interview with him. But I also just realized, like, he has no idea. Like, he said some shit about, like, Lil Nas X shouldn't have come out of the closet because people are going to judge him or yada yada. And, like, but, but, like... The way he said it, it just wasn't obvious that he was saying, like, he shouldn't come out the closet. Or he was basically just saying that he felt like Lil Nas X shouldn't have came out the closet because it would make his career harder or whatever. And it was so obvious to me as somebody who's, like, super media literate 
how that was going to be spun, and we didn't do it. We put the interview out, and then fucking Complex, whoever else, they all took the little quote and ran with it, you know? But Young Thug is just saying whatever the fuck comes to his head, and he is not thinking about how like, people are going to take it lie. at all. On the Lil Nas X situation, bro, the way the media is set right now, bro, that was the best thing he could have did. Like the way Come that, out as gay? Bro, the way the media is set right now, and the way that everything, how it is right now, bro, that was like one of the best moves for his career. But then he just came out and said that actually he has a kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> is that real? Like, no, I just bro. seen that. I was like... It's I, all, bro. I'm never confident that he's not Lil Nas trolling. X is the king of gimmicks, bro. Like, He's just good at the whole marketing side yes, of things. He yeah. really is. And then he'll drop his own. Like, he, he'll do something, and he'll go viral he's, look, and trending, and he'll drop something. See, he his, just said he got a kid, right? He just said he got a kid. But he's probably about to drop a crazy visual. Mm. Through, doing the whole Where thing. Where he's like, pregnant or something. Yeah, like how he did with the, Mont the Montreal album, bro. He was pregnant, and then he had the baby, and it was the album. Right. And, like, when he went to jail... For whatever he went to jail for, everybody thought he actually got arrested. The whole time it was the industry baby. Or when he jail. had the uh, the the blood in the shoes. Oh yeah, there's, oh, yeah. there's been released, so many things like this. And he released the um, yeah. "Call Me by Your Name" video when he's oh, twerking on the devil. And we had all the fucking hot buff dudes dancing in the video and stuff. That I pissed ain't. off every fucking I gangster I that I know. They were all mad as fuck about I that. I didn't see that one. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I seen the one where they're um, twerking in the shower though. Yeah. I was like, you weren't fucking with it. It's whatever, bro. Like, <laughs> I was just like. Um, I wonder why Jack Harlow wasn't in that scene. Mm. Probably trying to keep his his image free from that. Hey, but you seen how Jack Harlow was the only one with a female in that video? Mm. He wanted to make sure that people knew. See, that's how I rock with Jack Harlow, bro. I rock with Jack Harlow. He's smart. He must have a smart team too. Yeah, yeah. you could be in the gay guys video, but you gotta make it clear you're not gay. Exactly. At least, at least in some small way. He's the only one with a female. Right. Only one. Jack Harlow, I feel like, has the invincibility cloak because a white rapper getting a signature KFC meal before any black rapper, I'm sorry. <laughs> that that like that, chicken, doesn't that right? seem like something that would like be really controversial? Right. But nobody cares because everybody likes Jack Harlow. Jack They're Harlow like, all right, fuck it, yeah. He's Jack from Harlow. Kentucky. I mean, it did make sense, to be honest. But yeah, I was a little surprised by that. But I never thought of that. More power to him, you know? He's a hard. He's hard to dislike. Yeah, yeah. I just be thinking it's crazy that like you say one thing wrong on these interviews, you're canceled. No, you're a young rapper, dude. No, like, I'm not you're, talking you're about you. I'm not talking about me now. I'm not talking about me. I'm right. just talking about like rappers in general. I'm just saying rappers get more freedom to say crazy shit on camera than like pretty much anyone. Yeah, for sure. People will, like really let a rapper say some homophobic shit, some racist shit, and it's like they really have to go far with it before they really like. I don't yeah. know. I just see rappers getting a longer leash than most people. That's because a lot of these, a lot of gangster, gangster. You're so. a TikToker and you you like say something homophobic. Um, oh, you're done for. You are done, done, done. Really? Oh, yeah, so TikTokers done. and YouTubers, you think they get like? Uh, oh no, they get the same treatment because they right. have a more woke fan base, I think. Whereas the average rap fan, I mean. The rappers are literally like, you know, yeah, pull up and spray up the block, some pull shit up. like that. With TikToker doesn't get to say that. <laughs> with a 30 Glock. Yeah, that. Got 100 shots. We're going to hit your top. A million views. Yeah. A million views. So I go to, because with like TikTokers though, like they be doing dances and then they get on YouTube and then they do this and that. So it's to a point where it's like. Psh, they got gay fans. YouTube. Exactly. You're like Rappers don't have a lot of that. Mm, Less. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I feel like some rappers have less sensitive fans. True. Mm. And rap fans literally like rappers because of the fact that they're, they're gangster and they boorish eat. and obnoxious and fucking over the top and stuff. Very gangster and got a lot of face tats. If Harry Styles said the shit that the baby said on stage at Rolling Loud, he'd be canceled. Oh, no. Yeah, and the baby's canceled for it too. But for Harry Styles, oh, it would be over. Oh, no. He Look was. at all the shit they let Kanye get away with before they finally were like, all right, well, you got to get out of here, man. Because oh. were you around Kanye when uh, Melly shot that video, or was that before you started really rolling with him like that? Nope, I've never met Kanye. Mm. Still, still rocking your Yeezys. Nah. <laughs> it's a little tough even for you now. And I still rock the slides. Mm. But... Do you think you got a little out of pocket there? Huh? I don't, I don't even know what he said. That's a lot of stuff. 
I didn't. I'm not going to even like reiterate really, it because yeah, I don't want to drag you into it. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to what. <laughs> that like, was a lot. It, it a was, lot of stuff. It was like yeah. a, it was above him. Some of the things. My mom was. was my mom was thinking she was so smart. I was like, "What are you talking about?" Like, but she was talking about like, uh, "Yeah, Kanye's so smart. What he's saying. He's trying to get out of his Adidas deal and then make his own Yeezy brand and branch off. Wow, Black Power." Then two two weeks later, she's like, "Oh, yeah, he, he's tripping." No, it was a very inspiring story for a long time. Yeah, but now it's like, but I feel like I feel like Kanye could drop an album and be back on. Mm, I don't know. I feel like Kanye would have I don't to really know what like he repent. Said. Um, well, the main things was that he said some very disrespectful stuff about George Floyd, basically acting like George Floyd died of fentanyl overdose and not from being choked. He also said that he liked Hitler, that he didn't have anything against uh, the Nazis. Um, obviously, there was the slavery was a choice thing back in the day. That sounds seems, like that I'm seems kind of lie. small in comparison to a lot of this other <laughs> I'm stuff. I'm not gonna lie, bro. That sounds like a Discord general chat. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's probably. Probably I'm the not problem, gonna lie, man. you don't take those Discord general chats out into the public. So it's whatever also, he said, if he said anything that's worse than that, bro. It's also like he's associating himself with a lot of like the people on his campaign. There's this dude, Nick Fuentes, who yeah. a lot of people will call him a white nationalist. What is that? A racist. Oh wow. Not a huge fan of black people, basically, but uh, you know. BLM. Kanye hired him. Ooh. But now Kanye's Kanye been missing him. for weeks, allegedly. And I think Kanye's trying to figure out a way. He's probably making an album, like a hard album. It doesn't feel like he's making a lot of music. I feel like he's doing anything but make music. You never know, man. Or maybe design clothes. He's doing one or the other. I heard they tried to shut down, like, the Donda school. I'm like, kids go to school I think here, that bro. happened. Bro, I'm like, oh, I, just, I just look at it like, bro, so. like, don't drag the kids into this, bro. Like, people got to transfer and go to different schools now because y'all... Want to be crazy on it. I would say that the real error occurred when those parents took their kids out of a regular school and put them in the Donda Academy. Yeah, like you, that was the problem. I feel like every <laughs> I feel like every kid who went to the Donda Academy was more it was more like a clout thing. Like I go to Donda. Yeah, I heard a lot of stories about like high profile YouTubers, and actors, and stuff who their kids were in there. Exactly. Like the Ace Family, their kid was there. That's all. At clout, least one of bro. them. That's yeah. Like what the fuck are you hey, doing? Put your kid in a regular school, bro. Like. You let a you're letting a rapper run a school for Will there be Y and W Academy one day? No. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, nobody in Y and W struggle with his homeschool, okay? Why, mm. nobody in Y and W is smart enough to run a school. At all. How dare you say that about your mother? I know. I teach you. I had a tutor. I would allow her to educate my child if she didn't live mm. in Florida. Thank you. <laughs> we need a babysitter. I'm a great babysitter. You do it. And I know CPR. You could do it over Zoom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just set the laptop off. Bye, Parker. <laughs> like, don't touch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just yelling at him. Stop it. No, but we, oh my God. We have our house so oh. well baby proof now. We got yeah. these new door handles that the kid can't open. How tall is she? I bet she's probably tall. Already. Six eight. Six eight, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> she looks tall. But you both are kind of tall. She is. She's like top ninety nine percentile for her uh, for her age. Yeah, which she, I'm very she's proud definitely, of. Definitely, definitely trying to open doors and open all the cabinets and. Yeah, I'm I'm actually plotting a WNBA run. Definitely. I think she's got a dinner. Dang, Start her at bro. four. I'm gonna make sure she doesn't bring any weed pens overseas though. Brittany Garner free. What are you talking about? She is free. How do you feel yeah. about that trade? I don't think Biden would do that for my kid. Wow. Maybe though. But how you feel about that trade though? Very valid trade. They gave back a top shot of a a massive arms dealer. Because you got to think about what that arms dealer is really doing. This is the kind of guy that will go to like war torn areas between different people where you have you know like. Do you think he's dangerous? Yes, oh, <laughs> like wow. very, very. <laughs> like, but but picture that. Like he goes there. It would be like you going to like O Block and just being and and then going to the op side of town and be like. Hey, I got 500 guns. I'm trying to make this shit move. Money, money, money. Like, you, you buy all these guns and then sell mad guns to the other fucking side of town. And then they all start killing each other. Any normal person, you'd be like, damn, I just made a bunch of money, but there's blood on my hands. Th that's how, what this dude was doing. It was going to these war-torn countries that he doesn't have anything to do with and just selling them huge amounts of weaponry. It's pretty fucking crazy when you think about it. Yeah. That's like the ultimate. Because if you even kill one person, yeah, you got to have, different. it's got to be tough going through the day after that. You sold the guns that killed millions of people in a lot of these conflicts. That's gnarly. Like, this is a real psychopath. So, basically. He probably slept just fine at night. I'm, yeah, I mean, I guess. He seems, like, <laughs> totally fine. Like, when they're doing interviews with him or whatever, you don't give a fuck. 
So basically, we just gave back a massive gun dealer for a WNBA player. Yeah. But of color and lesbian. So Brittany inclusive. Free, man. You know, diversity rules. Hey, man. Whatever happens, <laughs> happens. Home, but home. she home. But this is the other thing, though, too, is like he's got to be under like massive like surveillance for the rest of his life, right? Like, I don't really think he's going to be able to just move around and do this kind of business like he used to be able to. But it's, who knows? Who knows? Even who knows within what? Russia, I mean, he's Putin's guy now. Russia. Maybe. <laughs> Russia. You, you should go tour in Russia. <laughs> anyway, you guys, you got new music dropping? Anything we need to know about? Big projects on the way? Mm. Your project drops in January. No, it doesn't. They pushed it back again. Anyways, he does have new music. <laughs> I got new music, though. I definitely got new music, but it's like, bruh, soon. I feel like like people hate the word soon. Do you think when Melly gets out, he's going to make you stop uploading your shit to his channel? Huh? Um, <laughs> I don't know, bro. Like, I really don't know. But you do your own channel now as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. His, his channel's doing, it's doing numbers now. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing it. About to hit a million. A million subs? That's hard. Damn. Yep. But yeah. You streaming and it's shit crazy too? Or? My first big record was on his channel. Yeah. Are you streaming second. as well? Or are you are you over that? I do it sometimes. Twitch TV slash B Slizzer. Sledger. B Slizzer. I don't know. I just I just I just be having fun. I just be doing me. But no, I got a project dropping probably in February, January. It just depends. And then I got a couple singles dropping in January. And that's about it. You still in good terms with track? Yeah. You guys are all still yeah. tight? Yeah. Yeah, you kinda of give me a little bit of a mm. That's my brother. Okay. But not as close to communication as before, maybe? Nah. He be busy though. I don't be tripping. Mm. But. What about Drew? I feel like Drew's one person that's been <laughs> holding him down heavy too. Drew Ski, bro, he bro, he lives with us, bro. Like oh. that's my real brother, like right there. That's that's Drew. That's Drew. Last time he was in here, he was on the phone with Melly. It was a couple years ago, but a couple yeah, years ago. Drew, that's family. That's my son. Yeah, that's that's Drew. That's my brother. Good to hear. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys uh coming in and everything. Of course. No doubt. Always a pleasure. I, I finally got you on camera. I know. I can't believe you got me on camera. <laughs> but okay, last time I seen you, you told me about like a series that you were gonna do, or did it ever end up happening with like ex's mom and shit about like that? Moms or or were you moms? you couldn't do it you know, because crazy. of the, tr the case, I, right? I couldn't do it because of the case. Right. And then I don't know. Like so I wonder if that I ever would, happened. I, no, no, it didn't it, happen. It didn't happen. It didn't. But no. We'll, we'll see when this case is over. I just we'll love the easy. idea of like you and uh an ex's mom and shit, like all being on camera together because it's just it would just be trippy as fuck for me. <laughs> I love her. Yeah, she's great. I love her. But uh, yeah, thank you I, guys. That definitely would be a dope show. Hmm. Interesting. What, hey, what is that? Free Melly. Um, on the V-Roy. Real time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. New music you, on the way. Just out here dancing. New music on the way. He's got the music in his soul, too, because you should have seen him just walking around the whole office, and he's just like dancing and, like, boogieing all the time. He's just, like, really got that ingrained in him. You can see right now. Look, he looks like he's having a seizure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, Adam, how you been? I'm great. I'm a dad now, you know? Last time I seen you, you weren't a dad now. Yeah, shit done changed. I'm out here procreating. Wasn't he, like, the first kid on your show? No, I don't think so. Because I had like Matt Ox on when oh, he was yeah, like yeah. twelve, and that was super viral when that happened. You know, I remember they tried to. And um... You dissed him, yeah, on on your interview, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> Matt Ox, bro. Matt hey. Ops. Matt. <laughs> Matt if you, Ops. If nah. you if you want to diss him in a song, you say like Matt Ox. You want a... yeah, Matt Ops. Matt Op, bro. Matt Ox, it's all love, man. Hey. Don't Real let this shit. man fool you. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, it's all love. Be slime. Wind up, you mom. Love. We're out AKA here. AKA Jamie. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for having Free us. Free Melly. No Free jumper. Melly. Coolest podcast in the world. Wind up you forever. Hey, like, comment, subscribe. One more question. What was it like interviewing on B Roy? Pretty legendary, especially in retrospect. I mean, he was real cool and interesting at the time, but 
also like all the shit I know about him now, I did not know at the time. I didn't he, either. He, he had a storied history throughout his life that I it's probably good I didn't know about it because it's not like it would be appropriate to bring up on camera or whatever, but yeah, I, I didn't know. realize how famous in the city he was before the rap. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know either. None of us really knew. You would never know, bro. Like we were, bro. You would, you would never know. You would never know unless you knew or you Or if you read his face. lyrics or anything, yeah. It was more like <laughs> even if you read the lyrics, it's more like when you meet him in person, bro. A lot know. of people say crazy shit in their lyrics. Yeah, so it's like you wouldn't know unless you knew him or you was one of one of the His was a little different. Yeah. I heard him say shit in songs that I was like, oh wow, that sounds realer than anyone I've ever heard say something like this. Thanks. But hey, long live him. Long live you, man. Appreciate you guys. All right. Thank you for Much having love. us. Wow.